What up YouTube and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's your boy Kind God King here with another video. Today I'm doing a bit of a tech review on the AMD Ryzen 7 1700. I'm going to be running Signbench R15 today so you can see how the processor performs. Um, now I do have the processor currently running at 3.9 uh, gigahertz which you can see here. My V core is set to 1.384 volts, so well within AMD's recommended range of 1.425. I'm using a MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, which you can see here. Um, I've opened up all the windows on CPU Z, so you can see what I'm using. You can see how things change as I'm running the test. Um, so that's the motherboard there. In this window, we have my RAM, uh, which is DDR4 RAM. It is 16 gigs and it's currently running just under 3000 megahertz, 2933, I believe. Um, this DRAM frequency obviously isn't correct, it is actually 2993. I'm running my RAM at uh, the timings here, 16, 18, 18, 35. It is in dual channel. Um, now the RAM that I'm running is Corsair Vengeance LPX Black, which I highly recommend for Ryzen, um, as this is 3000 megahertz RAM, and I have it pretty much running at 3000, which is great. As you can see to the right window, um, I'm running a Radeon RX 580. Now this is a Sapphire card. Um, it's only 4 gig, but that doesn't hold me back too much. And um, yeah, it's a great card. Now down below, I'm using HW Info 64, so you can watch my temperatures as I'm overclocking. Now, as far as the cooling I'm using on this 1700, I have a Corsair H60, which comes with a single fan, but I have added another fan, so I've got the whole push-pull system happening. Um, as you can see here, my idle temperature on the processor is not showing which is strange it was there a second ago i'll see if i can refresh this or something bear with me what i'll do is i'll quickly just reopen it because it was showing the temperature but now for some reason it's saying uh the cpu temperature is at zero which it would be amazing if i could have it at zero but obviously that's not the case now I'm just going to go down to the CPU temperature. So you've got your voltages that you can watch as well. Okay, here we go. So CPU temperature right now is 20, whoop, jumped 35 uh, degrees, which doesn't seem to be actually correct. I normally just go in this option here, which reads in the motherboard, uh, the CPU sitting at about 40, and then you've got the system and auxiliary temps. I'll just have a look down to see if there's a better indication of the actual temperature. No. So the best one to look at would be this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of sign bench benchmarks. Now, obviously, I do have my processor overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz uh, at the 1.38 volts. However, a stock Ryzen processor... Uh, runs at 3.2 and then one core can potentially boost at 3.7 but I'm going 3.9 on all eight cores so let's run the test and we'll see how it goes so to start the test we're just going to do a basic single core so we're going to have a look to see what score it achieves while uh, the single core test happened now this one's a little bit slower than the multi as it is only using one core as opposed to eight but it won't take too much time. So I'm just having a look at the temperatures as it's running. They seem to be fine, but they don't seem to be moving. Okay, so this uh, reading here definitely seems to be more accurate than the other one I was looking at. So it's showing the temperature hovering around the 38 degrees celsius mark 
which is really really good i think um this cooler turns out amazing it's a cheap cooler here in australia it's only around i believe 60 70 dollars but it's much better than the stock cooler that comes with the ryzen processor the wraith spire it keeps it cool while doing benchmarks while gaming as well um, so I'm really impressed and it fits in my case nicely. If you check out some of my other videos, you can see I'm using the Thermaltake View 27 case, which only allows for a single fan cooler at the back, um, which is what I'm using. Now this benchmark's still going. It is a little bit long. Um, the multi uh, ratio benchmark is a lot quicker. You'll see that in, as soon as I do it after this. But I wanted to just show you guys um, what it would achieve. Now, I've done this test a few times. If you have a look where my mouse is on the left here, running uh, my exact same processor at 3.4 gigahertz gave me a score of 1350. Uh, running it at 4 gigahertz gave a score of 1700. Now, so I have dropped it back 100 megahertz to 3.9. As for my particular processor, although it's a silicon lottery, uh, the sweet spot seems to be 3.9 gigahertz. Anything above 3.9, I'm finding I have to pump a lot more voltages into it. And even to bench at the 4 gigahertz you can see here, I had to put through 1.45 volts, which is just too much. Um, it's above what AMD recommends, so you can't use that daily. Potentially, you can damage your processor in that process, um, and that's not something I want, obviously, but I did just do the test once and immediately dropped it back down. But, like I said, 3.9 gigahertz at 1.384 volts, I think, is safe. You can use it daily. Uh, temperatures are great. Still hovering around the 38 degree mark here on the single core. Now, it will heat up a lot more using all eight cores, um, <coughs> which you will see in the next test. So, we're definitely more than three quarters of the way done on this one. Now, my results may be a little bit low as I'm recording this video on my PC while I'm trying to do this as well. Um, and I'm also recording the audio for this video, so it might shave a few points off um, But it will be interesting to see how it compares to the 4 gigahertz and um, How it also compares to 3.4 uh, For me, you know all the extra heat the extra voltage for 100 megahertz just isn't worth it uh, And it is a little bit disappointing that for my findings the Ryzen 1700 uh, doesn't go above 4 gigahertz easily or safely. I would have liked a higher overclock um, I've been an Intel enthusiast for a number of years and you know I've hit 5 gigahertz with processors. I've hit 5.6 gigahertz with an old i3 Intel But we're just not gonna see those high numbers with Ryzen in a safe environment um, So it's a little bit disappointing. However, the performance sort of speaks for itself though while you can only achieve around the 4, 4.1 mark on the 1700 stable, um, the performance speaks for itself. It can outperform uh, Intel chips, you know, that are running much higher. And um, it's a fraction of the cost, which is what I'm all about. So, having a look here, <coughs> if you look to the left... So I just ran that benchmark. Now running uh, my exact processor before at 4 gigahertz gave me a score of 160, uh, which was per one core. And now I've got 154. So I've lost six points, but my PC is super stable and there's no issue whatsoever and it's running nice and cool. So let's run the multi-processor one, uh, which is up here. And you'll see that this one, it just goes so much quicker. So each box represents a core. So you've got all eight cores actively making this image appear uh, and rendering the video essentially. And so much faster. I can do this one in a couple of seconds as opposed to the single core, which just takes forever. So that's going around and it's almost done actually. Uh, and if you look at the temperature, shot straight up to 55 degrees. That's the maximum it's hit while doing that, and it's finished. 
So looking at the score, I've lost 100 points, uh, which is quite funny. 100 megahertz decrease for 100 points. So at 4 gigahertz, I got 1700 as the score. And you can see I got 1600 at 3.9. So literally lost 100 points for 100 megahertz, which isn't so bad. And I can definitely live with that. Now, what we'll do, though, is we'll have a look at the power plans. As I was doing some reading myself, and I haven't tested this, I actually wanted to uh, have a go during making this video. So right now, my power plan is AMD Ryzen Balance, which came in the new Windows updates. Um, they actually customized it to effectively work better with Ryzen. Now, that's what I had set during this benchmark. So I'm gonna change it to high performance. Um, which may use more energy, that's fine, and it favors performance. So I'm going to select that, so that's all good. And I'm going to run the same test I just ran again, and let's see if it does actually make a difference. Um, like I said, I want, to know, I want to know for myself, I haven't done it yet either, so the results will be interesting. Um, will it get a higher score? Will it get a lesser score? Is the power plan worth it? Uh, should you run it? I only run it because it came in a Windows update and people have been talking about it saying they've got improved stability. Um, I haven't noticed much of a difference, but it'd be interesting to see. So that's that's interesting right there. So that score actually got um, seven points lower in high performance than it did in the um, AMD customized Ryzen one, which makes no sense. <laughs> so if you have a look at here, the um, AMD Ryzen performance, bat uh, sorry, battery power, I can't think, power plan, uh, is a balanced plan. So it's not a high performance plan, it's not a low performance plan, it's just balanced. But switching to high definitely made me lose some points. So I'm going to stick to the AMD Ryzen balance, and if you have Windows 10, uh, which you should for Ryzen, I recommend you use it too. Now, I'll just do one last test, um, just to sort of give you guys something else. So as I said, I do have a Radeon um, RX 580. I'm just gonna open up Afterburner and we'll quickly do the GPU test just to see what it gets. So as you can see right now, everything is running stock. The fan's at 52, um, not 100. 1366 uh, megahertz for the core clock, 1750 for the memory. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the temp limit all the way up the power limit i'm going to put all the way to 30 which will give it a bit more juice if it needs it and i'm going to up my core clock to let's go 1450 that did not work so we'll go 1450 for the core clock and for the memory we'll go 2000 so i'm just going to apply those settings like so and we'll run this open gel test uh, now this test tests the video cards. This has nothing to do with the Ryzen processor. I just want to show you guys how the um, RX 580 performs. I'm quite liking it. I think it is quite good. Um, as a graphics card, I've had many, many RX 480s that I've tested over time. This 580 is the first one I've had and automatically I know it's better than the 480s. It can overclock a lot higher. I was never um, able to exceed 1420 megahertz previously and this one does 1500 I've tested before and even the memory clock I've had this up to 2250 and it still works and I could never ever get an RX 480 up anywhere near that um, so it's a decent card but I did get the Sapphire Pulse OC edition so it is a better card than the standard cards or the reference 580s and um, yeah, I really like it. I think it was a great choice. I'm happy with it. Alrighty, let's have a look. So I've got 77.33 FPS on the OpenGL test, uh, which isn't too bad. Now, let's have a look here. I don't know why it's saying a 57.7 got higher. Anyway, I'm not too sure how the graphics card works and the point scaling. However, like I said, um, I was only here to do the CPU test anyway, so I'll worry about that at another time. 
But uh, let me know what you guys think of the video. You know, if you like it, please hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Um, share my videos. The more viewers I get, the more subscribers, the more it makes me want to make a lot more videos. And since my other Ryzen video had so much success in terms of views, I thought I'd make another one. And this is one of many. I'm actually going to try and do as many tests as I can uh, to show you guys how the Ryzen performs. I might do some FPS um, tests in games if you're thinking of buying one. Any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, just stay positive and thanks for watching. See you later.